Hello there, this is John V, Software Evangelist at Jscape, and you're watching a Jscape MFD server tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to set up an FTPS service on Jscape MFD server. FTPS allows you to carry out secure file transfers. File transfers are secured via SSL, which provides data in motion encryption as well as authentication via certificates. I'm going to assume you already have Jscape MFD Server installed and up and running, but in case you don't, I've pasted a link to the installation instructions in the description. Ready? Let's log in to our MFD Server Manager and get started. In order to provide SSL encryption and authentication capabilities to your file transfers, you need to generate server keys first. When you generate server keys, you're also in effect generating the public keys needed for encrypting the files and the private keys for the digital certificates needed by clients to authenticate the server. Launch your Jscape MFD Server Manager and go to Server Key Manager. Navigate to the Server Keys tab and click the Generate button. You then select or enter the appropriate values for the required settings. There are a couple of things I'd like to point out. In case you're wondering how the key alias differs from the common name, or CN, the alias is only referenced within the context of Jscape MFT Server Administration. Only you, the server admin, will have any use of it. The CN, on the other hand, can be seen by a user when that user's file transfer client application receives your server's digital certificate. Another setting you might want to know more about is the key algorithm. If you want to know which key algorithm RSA or DSA will work best for your particular setup, I recommend you read the blog post which works best for encrypted file transfers, RSA or DSA. I provided a link to that article in the description. You can also choose a key length as well as a validity period. Enter all pertinent information in the text fields below. When you're done with all those settings, click the OK button found at the bottom. You should then see your newly created key among the list of server keys. Click OK. You're now ready to add an FTPS service to your server. Let's go over to a domain and do that. Navigate to the Services node, go to the Services tab, and click the Add button. Select FTP slash S for the service type and click OK. In the succeeding screen, enter your host's IP address and then enter the port associated with this service. Depending on the FTPS type you choose, which you'll be doing in the next step, that should be either port 21 or port 990. Yes, that's right, 21 is the same port you normally use to connect to an FTP server. But don't worry about that. Your server will know if a client's connecting over FTP or FTPS. Choose an FTPS type. The options are explicit SSL, forced explicit SSL, and implicit SSL. For guidance in choosing between SSL, implicit, explicit, and forced explicit modes, just click the link to the article in the description. Finally, click the alias of the server key recently created. You can of course choose any other existing server key found in that list. By selecting a key from that list, you're instructing the server which private key it should use for the digital certificates it sends to users who connect to this particular service. Consequently, you're also telling the managed file transfer server which public keys should be sent along with a digital certificate. The public key will be used in providing encryption to the secure file transfer session. Click OK when you're done. You should then see your newly added FTPS service in the list of services offered by your Jscape MFT server. Now that you have your FTPS file transfer service up and running, you can now give it a test run. Let's fire up any client and click the connect button. Let's create a new site and then enter the host IP address and the port number. Also enter the username and password of one of your server's user accounts. Finally, select FTP slash SSL auth TLS from the protocol list box. When you're ready, click the connect button. Assuming everything goes well, you'll receive a digital certificate which you can use for authenticating the server. 
That is, if you were an actual end user, you would normally check to see if the contents of that certificate are equivalent to the contents of the certificate normally issued by the server you wanted to connect to. The user will most likely have to ask confirmation from the server administrator for this. If the contents are exactly as expected, then that means a connection was really established with a legitimate server and not an imposter. Note that the certificate your user will be seeing at this point is only a self-signed certificate. Self-signed certificates are only good for internal use. For external use or for file transfers that require higher levels of security, you should really employ certificates signed by duly recognized certificate authorities. If you're not familiar with digital certificates and certificate authorities, I suggest you read the post, What is a Digital Certificate? Again, I provided a link to that article uh, in the description. Click Accept or Accept and Save. Accept and Save is what you should choose if you don't want to be prompted again every time you connect to the same service on that same server in the future. That's it. Now you know how to set up FTPS on a G-Stream server.